Hello and welcome to this session. Uh, today we'll uh, discuss about some features in PSCAD uh, software. So I assume you have already viewed this tutorial which is available in this uh, channel in YouTube. Yeah. So it basically talks about uh, uh, very simple circuits. Yeah. And uh, some overview of PSCAD like how to rig a circuit and analyze them. Yeah. So now uh, the agenda for this sessions are shown as uh, seen in the screen. So first I'll overview the uh, basics or you know some features in uh, PSCAD basic features. Then we'll see how switches are you know absorbed in PSCAD model. Uh, not in too much of mathematical rigor, but mainly its implications. Yeah. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, like various uh, transients in EMTP. Uh, like some features for transient handling. Uh, basically, it's let's say if you want to start or make a simulation transient free or you know something like that. We'll see see in this part. Then we'll see a quick optimization, multi run, and some uh, tips and tricks for handling large projects yeah so before we start let me just quickly create a you know a new case and what i'll do is i'll i have already created a folder in in this path i'll copy this and just paste it over here yeah and then create an example quick example i'll just call it as example one just say okay yeah so you will see the, uh, a canvas in PSCAD will be created, yeah. And if you come here, you will see, and if I refresh, okay, yeah, I think unless unless we uh, make something and write, it, I think it may not be uh, visible. So what I'll do is I'll quickly create a, a you know RL circuit and uh, uh, illustrate some features with with this basic circuit. I'll press Control and select what all equipments I want. So I want voltage source, R, L, and ground. So I'll just copy this and just paste it here. Okay. Yeah, I think one uh, block at a time. So not you should not uh, copy from two file, two library files. Yeah, see here. Copy this, paste, yeah. and then we'll just hit save. Yeah. So now, since I added some uh, equipment in PSCAD, you will see these files will get generated, and this is the main file which will be which we are uh, running, uh, like which we are seeing there. It is PSCAD executable X. Yeah, and then some extra files. So later on, uh, we'll uh, get to know like in case if you want to share this file with your colleague or preserve this, basically you need to save mainly these three things. Yeah. But truly speaking, PSCX is good enough. But later on, uh, uh, for example, if you have some library. Uh, in like user defined library you know then uh, sometimes it's always good to you know share this complete uh, uh, set and later on you will have other formats as well you know uh, will which we'll see in further sessions so i'll quickly come here and quickly rig this circuit you know, press control w to enable wire yeah. and then select all and move it here yeah, I'll make this. Uh, so I hope you have, we have already seen in the previous like the uh, YouTube video here. So I'll just select this quickly. Go to signal parameters. Make it uh, one kV. Yeah. And let's not worry about what this RAM time is. But uh, for time being, I'll make it zero. And make it 50 hertz, and that's all. So we are good to go. So it's a, just a voltage source now. And I'll just connect this. And to measure the current, I'll uh, quickly go to components. Click the meter and then uh, just collect connect it here. Yeah, so we have uh, set a quick example here. So I'll just make this, you know, only this and say okay. Yeah, now in order to see this plot, I'll uh, we need to have an output channel and then uh, you can refer any of the variable using this data label. So I can just call this, just I'll just zoom out double click on it and make it IA. So since it's uh, my version here, you see it's 4.6.3. So uh, depending on versions, you may have different options available. So here I have this option. I'll uh, just say yes. Like basically it just copies the name in the uh, output channel, which you can uh, view 
uh, in case if you have you know larger project it helps so i'll just say right click pull up the graphs and i'll just pull up this overlay graph with signal yeah. and i can just resize if you want yeah so that's it so uh, the uh, quick example is set now i'll go to projects and these are the attributes of simulation and basically uh, pscad it's a preprocessor over a uh, emtp solver which is called emtdc yeah so the emtdc is the main engine or solver which uh, does all the magic of emtp formulation yeah using trapezoidal method uh, and pscad is an uh, o what you call preprocessor over emtdc and soon we'll get to know more yeah and basically in one of the sessions we'll be talking of rscad which is a sister version to pscad but those are used to uh, you know trigger or uh, configure RSCAD simulations, uh, RTDS simulations later. Yeah, so there are some uh, differences in uh, PSCAD and RSCAD, uh, which as and when required will highlight. Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead. So here the units may not be mentioned. So what we'll do is we'll just click on this general setting and go to this runtime. So basically, if you see this is uh, runtime in second. So let's say we'll run it for 0.5 second with step of 50 second, uh, 50 microsecond. But our circuit, since it is very simple. Uh, I'll just make it let's say 100 micro and we want channel output at 100 micro and I'll just say okay I yeah, will save it and let's quickly uh, run it yeah. the moment you save this uh, still nothing happened in the folder directory yeah as you can see here I'll come back and hit run yeah and note it's a uh, this tool has been made uh, keeping in view uh, power system uh, uh, users so mainly all voltages and current plots are by default set to kilo amps yeah so basically what you are seeing here it is in kilo amps and uh, voltage what we had applied was 100 kilo volt but later on you can go and change it appropriately yeah so let me just zoom it here uh, probably this may not be visible so what i'll do is i'll just click on this and hit this bold so i hope you, now you can see it yeah just to make it uh, view better i'll just zoom it and now to zoom uh, appropriately you can hit y to vertical zoom x for you know let's say if you are zoomed in here and if you want to reset then you just say x and if you want to auto you know x and y x auto reset if you want to do press r yeah yeah so i hope you can see this so this is the transient which we got uh, since we directly started at some point yeah so one can just confirm at 50 hertz at least at steady state you know whether this values are correct so, so this is one quick overview which we have uh, discussed in the uh, YouTube uh, video. So now let me just go ahead and show you some more features. For example, if I uh, come here and uh, for example, if in, yeah, so in case if let's say if I give it some uh, phase shift, let's say if I just say 10 degree, so as in now you can just uh, do it, you know. So basically it's a source and since your RAM time you have made it zero. So at T equal to zero, this voltage is applied to this RL circuit. Yeah. So now I have just shifted the waveform, like voltage waveform by 10 degree. And if I just run it, you will see you will have a different transient uh, altogether. Yeah. It may not be uh, visible so nicely. So I'll just make, let me make it 50 degree or so. Yeah. Yeah. See now the transient have reduced and so on and so forth. So basically if you, uh, you change the phase shift or let's say the application of voltage at what time t you should apply to rl circuit so that you have minimum transient or something like that yeah uh, can be achieved by just changing phase shift or maybe connecting a switch and you switch switch it on at will yeah so those are some uh, analysis which one one can just do yeah and not only for this very basic circuit but uh, one can have a large pretty large uh, power system network or you know having uh, power electronic interfaces as well yeah like hvdc and fats yeah so now let me just show you a few mechanisms to uh, handle this transient in large project so before that let me just go and show the directory what things are generated so when you see when you run this you will have this folder generated by the same name and then we have some files here which you need not worry these are mainly a uh, map files and uh, some way where a pscad handles certain things yeah yeah so we need not worry at this moment yeah so i'll, I'll just come back to pscad and uh, let me just show you uh, uh, 
a quick feature so let me just move to uh, agenda so we have just seen overview and i'll quickly brief uh, uh, what uh, you know in generic emtp pack packages things are things may be you know little tricky when switches or switching actions uh, come you know so i'll just illustrate one example yeah so yeah so what i'll do is i'll just keep it here and move this setup to little right and basically i'm just adding a switch here so basically i'll add a let's say uh, a diode yeah so i'll just zoom out and see yeah so here you will see power electronic devices and here we have various switches so i'll just pick up diode and just connect it here yeah rotate and then just connect so basically it's a half wave uh, rectifier with uh, applied to an rl load yeah so if i run yeah so things here uh, pscad handles uh, certain switching or let's say you know uh, certain conditions wherein uh, uh, the uh, underlying method like uh, actually it is using trapezoidal method so it has some numerical issues when it sees sudden changes in you know uh, 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 what you call eigen values of the system sudden change or uh, let's say let me put it this way if the system uh, is very stiff and if you are doing any switching you know for example these diodes can be modeled as a on off resistors yeah so if it is conducting r on will be very low and source will be seeing a particular eigen value and in case if it is off, suddenly you will see the eigenvalues magnitude will be too large. So in such situation, there may be a condition. One can show that a trapezoidal method will tend to give you a numerical issue, which is sometimes referred to as chattering. Yeah. So more theory can be uh, breezed through in uh, maybe further sessions, or you can just search online. Yeah. So before running it, maybe uh, I'll quickly go to project setting and to handle, uh, you know. Uh, this numerical chatter maybe i'll just quickly switch off this interpolate detect chatter and suppress effects uh, uh, functions and i'll just say okay so basically i'm just trying to show you in generic emtp packages like uh, further we'll see later emtp atp or rscad or ps uh, like later pscad with this features disabled you will see you uh, sometime you may have incorrect uh, in, uh, results you know for example if I just zoom in, you will see suddenly there is something coming up. And in case if you further zoom in, you can relate it this uh, to the step size, you know. So basically, this is uh, what chattering effects are. So, so in PSCAD mainly, uh, we have this feature like uh, it happens due to some reason, yeah. So it's a numerical artifact of a trapezoidal method. So in this tool, PSCAD, uh, there is a feature wherein it goes back in time, interpolate, and tries to get a state you know so uh, the variable which is associated with the uh, switchings uh, mainly this let's say for in this example this current it interpolates and try to end up into you know one time wherein uh, you have this zero you know so more theory can be just seen uh, as in like how this method works basically it just comes in time modifies alter something and then uh, try to suppress uh, uh, this chattering you know uh, but this is this may not be available with all the or most of the EMTP packages, yeah. And especially in RSCAD, wherein we are doing real-time simulations later, I'll show you, uh, like we'll show you. So there you may not have any provision to come back in time and modify something. So there we sometimes use numerical snubbers, you know. So we keep uh, connect something, uh, let's say some numerical snubber, let's say RC or like very large, uh, like uh, what do you call, very high impedance RC connected to this, you know, or across the switch. So some there are some ways to handle this chattering yeah so I, I hope it gives you a feel you know so later on when you have a lot of power electronic circuits or very large node systems and in case if you have switchings or conditions which can trigger this chattering so in pscad by default you have this uh, uh, interpolate and you know detect chatter and suppress feature yeah so i'll uh, uh, if i just now enable that and just run it you will see altogether the chattering will get eliminated and uh, uh, you know, then this is the correct uh, waveform. You can just check, in fact, yeah. Uh, you can check if it is correct. So, for example, if I just scale it and you have 1 kV applied to 1 ohm, so you can get to know uh, whether it's correct or not, yeah. But now, if you just zoom in, you will see it is, you know, perfectly at uh, 0. Yeah, and depending on some snubber value, you may have some offsets seen, yeah. Anyway, let's, so this is one part. 
So basically, PSCAD will help you out to handle, uh, you know, some numerical artifact of trapezoidal. Yeah, most of the time it helps. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and now let's quickly move towards the uh, transient part. So what I'll do is I'll just remove this diode and come back to the uh, circuit. Yeah, so since we have already seen, uh, let's say if you just run, so basically voltage is applied at t equal to zero and we see uh, altogether different transients. So for example, here I have added a phase shift, you know, so I'll, if I go and let's say uh, make it zero and run it again, and just to view something, uh, yeah, let me just run it. So suddenly you see there is a you know different transient and in case if i you know if i change this you will see if i just come over here and just say let, let's say if we increase it five folds you will see depending on the transients you will see there is you know altogether different transient yeah i hope it is now perceivable clearly yeah note the currents are in kiloamps so one needs to scale it if you want to you are working for you know some uh, low power rating uh, devices so you need to appropriately scale this yeah so yeah so now comes the uh, uh, feature which is important for uh, most of the uh, uh, users and especially for larger system this really helps the information which will be up sharing sh uh, shortly so how how to handle transients let's say uh, for this circuit you are only interested in the steady state part and not in the transient yeah so PS, uh, here in PSCAD, we have uh, uh, mainly two features I'll show you. There are other ways also to do uh, the task. So mainly imagine you have a very large circuit and uh, let's say synchronous generator and uh, various uh, power electronic devices wherein you need to do a proper uh, uh, switching sequence. Yeah. So in those cases, you may have uh, a lot of transients like building up of the case. So that may not be required, let's say. And your study only concerns about uh, the steady state part. Yeah. So how to go about it? So one of the method which works uh, neatly with, uh, let's say, very simple system, if you know uh, how to do. Yeah. So let's say for this very sim simple example, uh, we were, uh, I have shown, like we have seen this uh, ramping feature. So what basically it does is, in case if you ramp, uh, let's say if you give, provide a ramping, so voltage will be gradually applied and then transients can be absorbed within, you know. So transients will occur, but it may not be seen so wildly in the current waveform. So let me just show you. So if I just make it, let's say, uh, again, there should be some judgment of what this ramping time should be. Yeah, I'll just say, okay, I'll just run it. So though the voltage is applied at zeroth time, but you will see there will be, you know, the uh, probably, the you know, I hope you can see the difference. So it you are just ramped till here. But there will be still some transients, uh, but but this is good enough, you know. Let, so one can just tune this ramping time, and probably you can just end up into uh, uh, mostly in the, into the steady state quickly. Yeah. But there may be cases wherein this may not be feasible or no, may not be so easy to do, you know, uh, because of let's say some starting sequence or mainly with generators and some power electronic uh, uh, control setups. Yeah. So in those cases, and especially let's say we don't have to alter anything in the system yeah so there is another method called snapshot feature uh, which i'll show you shortly so basically what you do is you run let's say you run uh, yeah to illustrate that i'll uh, switch off this uh, ramping feature run so that we have a view of uh, what we are simulating and we are only interested to find the steady state and by, by let's say by visual visual inspection you get to know okay at around 0.4 or 0.3 second we are almost into this onto the steady state yeah and uh, you can uh, imagine for a large circuit you can run for 10 or 10 so on 20s of seconds and then you want to uh, later your analysis begins from that so what you can do is you can create an image at exactly at that point so basically any states in the system at that point will be stored and the moment you resume it will resume from that yeah so i'll just show you what what do i mean so i'll just create here a, i want to create a snapshot file and let's keep this default and i'll say at point three create a snapshot you know point three uh, and here you can run it to point three or point five it doesn't matter but this snapshot will be created at point three so maybe i can just run it till point three or point three one let's say yeah save it and uh, once you do this actually in the uh, in the folder here 
you will see a snapshot file will be generated yeah so basically at till point 3 like point 3 ka uh, states will be saved so let me just show you here yeah so if you come to home let go to home and just hit run and you can just see here also a snap file will be generated dot snp with the same name yeah so it already ran and you can see there is a snapshot file generated yeah so basically we have uh, just stored a uh, uh, you know state at point 3 so now let's say now for uh, and note this is valid only if you don't have any addition or removal of any of the circuit elements you know like states you don't want to alter uh, the moment you have created snapshot so you should create snapshot only when you are okay with the circuit design or let's say of the system yeah for example i don't want to remove let's say inductor or if i want to add an inductor then don't create a snapshot you add it then you create a snapshot yeah else it may give some issue and you can experiment on it uh, when it is valid or when it is not yeah so now what i will do is i'll run with this point 3 snapshot created and i want to run from that point yeah so i'll just come here i'll switch off the snapshot creation i'll say okay i want startup method as snapshot file and i'll browse through the file yeah, so it's in the same folder dot snp. Yeah, and if you note, the moment you save from snapshot, actually the step size will vanish because, uh, uh, for example, if your step size is different, you will see you will have different states. Uh, at, uh, you will actually end up at different time or different state evaluation, you know. So basically what I mean is in case if you have step size of one millisecond, you know the state value what you store may be different so just just for handling those they uh, this package actually removes this uh, feature of you know defining step size if you go with snapshot yeah so this is one of the thing and since we have uh, created snapshot at point 3 now if you use this snapshot which was created at point 3 the simulation will start above point 3 for example if you have a circuit breaker here or switch which says you which switch at 0.5 second yeah and if you use this snapshot uh, then the simulation will start directly from 0.3 second yeah so one can just try it so let me just let, let's say if i just run it to 0.2 second basically it is point whatever time of snapshot plus this time for that time it will be simulated for example let me just show you If I run, actually, it will end up. It will start from the uh, snapshot point, and it will just run only till point two. So basically, this is point three plus point two. It is point five second of the system run. Yeah, though it shows zero, but this zero is actually point three, point three seconds in instance. Yeah. So for example, in case if I uh, now change any element, it may not take effect. Let me just show you. For example, if I just make it double, like if I double it. So if you just see this uh, magnitude more or less is if you just hover it is 0 0.083 yeah if I just run it this solutions may not be affected basically the inductance value or the state values are stored already so though the elements are there but you can't change it yeah let's say for example if I add another element and this snapshot won't hold yeah let's say if I just connect it here so if I try to run, it will say an error. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, this the states pertaining to this were not saved in the snapshot. So in case if you go here, you know it will uh, just say snapshot file error pertaining to it. You know it is incompatible and so on and so forth. Yeah. So you can explore more. Yeah. For it, I'll just stop stop this. Yeah. And uh, so I hope you understood this snapshot feature. It is very useful for uh, large systems wherein you don't want to sit and run for a long time. You know. Okay. So, so this is what we mean by transient handling transient. So you can just ramp up, but if the system doesn't allow you, then you need you can create a snapshot. Yeah. Now let's quickly go to the optimization uh, task. So what I'll do is I'll and uh, okay. So I'll go to before going to that let me give you an example let's say if you have this function which needs to be minimized and let's say x and y can take any value between minus infinite to infinite yeah 
and we want to just minimize the value of z yeah so how to go about it let's say just to show you maybe i'll just run this just to make you feel what this trajectory looks like uh, what this uh, function is about so this is this function this is x and this is y so basically we just want to find a global minima of this okay how how to go about it and basically that will occur at x equal to 1 and y equal to 2 yeah with intuition you can get to know if you just substitute x 1 and y 2 the answer you will get is 0 which is what we are writing here analytical minimum 0 yeah so yeah so how to go about it so so just to give you a feel i'll uh, instead of this 3d plot if we just show you it's you know it's shadow on the xy plane it's it looks like this which is like circle concentric circles for this uh, example and at the center at the center we'll have this minima which is zero and it will occur at x equal to one and y equal to two yeah so i'll just close this So what I'll do is like uh, we use some method like a method which is exactly uh, or more or less it it also uses the same method which is an uh, uh, which is called Nelder Mead Nelder's Nelder Mead method. It's a simplex uh, method to solve an optimization problem, and these are also called as a polytopic approach or polytope approach. You know, so basically whatever number of variables you want to uh, use it to minimize, uh, it, it just creates a, a polygon structure of of that uh, that number for example i want to we want to minimize the function z for two variables x and y so to, so there will be a triangle like uh, this method first will create a triangle because it is 2 plus 1 you know it will create a triangle and at every edge on the function it will evaluate the func function and see which which edge you can find the minima so in that direction it the triangle will move you know basically it is also called as amoeba method so it, as if it's you know on the curve, uh, there is an amoeba and it is trying to get uh, that amoeba is trying to, you know, approach the minima, so to speak. So, for example, let me just show you if I just uh, initialize it with minus 5, x as minus 5 and y as 5. And if I just run this method, you can uh, probably see in this image, so this is the contour and this minima is here. So, you can see it just descends the, uh, uh, this uh, convex problem and it just comes here and if I just take it side to the side let's say the moment it converges with the tolerance what we have specified yeah yeah so I have set the tolerance band of this like minus like milli yeah and iteration count it took some iteration and the values you will see which will be near to your analytical is zero but again to the tolerance condition to the tolerance and the solution which we know was this you know uh x to be one and y to be near to two yeah but note in this this program which i have done here tolerance are applied to the points the uh, variables we basically x and y but in elder made uh, in the pscad uh, tool we'll see the uh, there will be also a tolerance method a tolerance uh, variable specified but it will be applied for the consecutive values of objective functions you know so i'll, I'll just show you what 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 does it mean yeah, before going ahead, I hope you understand uh, this was uh, uh, pretty straightforward. So, yeah, let me just show you an example, quick example. So, basically, this was the function which we had uh, minimized. So, it's like it, it it's a convex function function, and uh, at least in the, yeah, it's a convex function. So, he, here you have only one global minima. So, this method may uh, definitely it works out again depending on step size or uh, what size uh, what is the size of the triangle or the polytope you specify yeah you need not worry if, if you want to know more you can just uh, serve the literature yeah so but there may be some uh, non convex problems for example this uh, example what you say this is called a rastrigin function yeah uh, so here you see there are lo lot of minimas occurring you know local minima so let's say if you start here so it may end up and let's say depending on step size it will end up in one of the local minima may happen yeah if you are just near the global minima it will eventually reach to global minima but not to not at any point yeah so what essentially it says is in case if your objective function becomes uh, you know non convex basically you will have a lot of non minimas 
in the range of interest of the variables basically uh, then it's always recommended to you know try with various initialization let's say you start here start here here or any randomly few locations you start and then try to seek the global uh, like global minima yeah and by the way this non convex optim optimization like uh, functions what we see here are also used to uh, check the performance of various optimization tools yeah so more on this maybe in sub uh, further sessions so i hope you understand so uh, since we are will be using will be rigging a power electronic circuit you know interface with let's say ps cad a power system uh, we it may happen the you know uh, the resultant objective may become non convex something like this so it's always recommended you be try it for we we should initialize and try it for various uh, initial points and various step sizes yeah yeah so what i'll do is i'll quickly rig the same example and we need we will end up into this solution yeah so let me just quickly rig this so i'll come to ps cad and by the way i don't want to you know switch off this uh, like i don't want to delete this uh, circuit so basically what i will do is uh, there is a feature called layer so what i will do is i'll just copy entirely and right click and say add to layers and i'll just say circuit layer you know pkt layer and i'll just say okay so you can see this uh, gets highlighted if you can't see this then uh, you need to go to view panes and here you will have layers yeah so once you are here uh, what i can do is i can just disable it yeah so now uh, so nothing is there in this canvas because it, it it's not functional right present yeah so what i'll do is i'll quickly rig a circuit here uh, mainly to illustrate uh, rig a uh, formulation of optimization to you illustrate the uh, process yeah so basically we want to realize this function uh, which is sum of two things yeah yeah and then each thing is square function and then a difference so basically i'll we'll need to collect some uh, squaring function and addition so i'll go to masters press control h to come back and i'll go to this uh, csm functions and i'll collect some functions here for example we will require square operation and then and uh, summer so i'll just copy this come over here paste yeah so we require uh so i'm just illustrating how we realize a function or uh, how we realize a block or mathematical function using uh, you know this uh, blocks available in the ps cad so i'll just take it to the you know i'll just drag it and take it to this side yeah so it's a sum of two things so let's say this is the output i'll uh, quickly let me write it so this is the objective function right yeah and it is sum of two things and each is square of uh, the function so i'll just say this copy paste yeah and then each entity to the square is sum again like difference basically so i'll just connect and i'll say d is subtract yeah, and i'll just copy this we have realized this and we want now minus 1 so we need to connect 1 here and 2 here so i'll i hope you understand so this is basically the function we want to minimize so i'll just come back go to components and click this real constant connect it here here and this is basically 2 and so this will be our first variable x yeah and this will be our second variable y you want to minimize this function yeah so now how to go about it go to uh, the main uh, directory and in io devices you will see there are uh, some functions so i'll just pick up this uh, optimum problem i'll paste it here so basically here you need to require require to enter the value of uh, function yeah evaluated at this initial uh, uh, point for example it will give you x and y and you feed this objective function here so there are multiple ways to do it for example if i just connect now this objective function which will be evaluated will be given to this function and this uh, block will uh, you know feature will uh, minimize that depending on the conditions which we specify 
there is another way to do this uh, you know for large projects it's a tip again so let's say if this is our objective function i'll just say objective function and i'll just copy this and paste it over here so it becomes very uh, you know simple to view and it may not have you may not have a lot of crossings in case if you are making a large project so this is recommended most of the time yeah and now we'll go to this scheme and you will see there is some tolerance and you want to either enable or disable so first we'll quickly go and enable it yeah tolerance let's keep it default and maximum run let's say how much time how many times you can run let's say let's keep it at 100 and there are various approaches maybe you can just surf through uh, i'll just select simplex and go to simplex starts yeah simplex uh, seeds so what you see here they specify we need to specify initial step size and initial condition of the variable to begin with yeah uh, and basically we have two two numbers to be like this two x and y variables to be uh, optimized so i'll just say two variables now i'll go to simplex and now you will see this two initializations will come since we already know solution will x will go to 1 so basically i'll just initialize with the same similar initials or different initials basically from the solution so that we need to know whether it really goes to 1 and 2 yeah and let's say by default initial step size is 0.5 i'll just make it 1 and i'll just say okay so the block is now configured yeah note we have made it enabled defined this numbers simplex and just saying this and in case if you want to write the output you can Select yes, and uh, this variable will be created in the directory here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and as already discussed, uh, this tolerance will be applied for the objective function and not for the variable. So let me just run it. And one more thing is, uh, in case if you choose simplex, since twenty uh, variables you can minimize, twenty uh, variables you can optimize. So actually here the output, what you see, it will be twenty. Actually, basically, it will have twenty. Uh, it's an array of twenty elements. Yeah. So basically, we need to tap only first element here and second element here. Yeah. To do it, I'll come back. I'll press Control H. And in this, uh, I we want. You know, this one and two. I'll just copy it, paste it. Yeah. so this is first value and this is your second value yeah okay so things are set and basically we just want to run this uh, uh, optimization uh, so what i'll do is i'll quickly try to show you the, what this value will be so i'll just connect okay i'll just connect this uh, Here and maybe I'll just say it is x out, and this is y out. Yeah, and just to since it will be a single value, I'll quickly select this polymeter here. So this is for x. Yeah, and similarly for y, yeah, and uh, the same thing we can do it for this as well. I'll just say objective function OBJ. Yeah, so we have already set the things now. So what we can do is uh, since uh, it doesn't require you to. Have larger time because it's just a simulation, you know, like optimization. So it's an algebraic solution which needs to be performed. So I'll come here and I'll quickly make it. Let's say I want to run it for only uh, one millisecond, and maybe with step of one millisecond. So I'll make this as thousand because it's just one iteration at like one uh, run at a time. So I'll just make it thousand. So it's basically one step it will be using to solve. Yeah. So without investing too much time, what I'll do is. Uh, i'll quickly hit run and we know the objective value should go to 0 this function value and this should near to 1 should near to 2 so let's see if we run what value we get yeah so you will see it it iterates you know and somehow it entered into uh, 
different values altogether. So basically, these step size may not be appropriate. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll go to. So this is some trial and error effect. So I'll just say this, and let's run again. Yeah, I think uh, it is exhausting the. Uh, maybe let me just make it four hundred. Okay, maybe uh, yeah. Since we already knew what the values are, maybe uh, yeah, initial seeds. Maybe I'll just change it to some other number. Yeah. So the, so this may happen, you know. Something and let's see what, what we get. And basically, the convergences are you know this convergence of this method is basically due to uh, the the tolerance what we have specified. It may uh, it just uses that. Maybe let me just show you. So actually, it creates this out run file. And if I just zoom in, and you will see this variable one and variable two. We started with this initial value. And this objective function actually this difference is taken, you know this difference minus this difference is actually the thing, and uh, somehow yeah I think somehow it didn't really complete the iterations because it is not in the tolerance. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll just come here and maybe I'll uh, we'll just we need to t tweak it you know so sometime it works sometime it may not work it may happen yeah so you can change your algorithm or. Uh, uh maybe you can uh, you know pass in some different seed so that it just just works so in by the way it just shows you an it gives you a feel uh, of how things can be you know yeah so somehow it converges but you know this doesn't work out but i hope you understand yeah so Yeah, so let me just change one more thing here. Let me let me run it for you know few iterations. Let's say I don't know with yeah it, it probably it may not help in any way, but let's let's run it. Okay, okay, that also matters. So at least you run it for few few samples. I think we just ran it for one uh, sample. Maybe you just run it for few samples. Probably uh, it will have some uh, you know. Uh, Better schemes, so to speak, like how it evaluates function over time, maybe some averaging or some uh, statistical, uh, you know, uh, or uh, maybe some way it it may be just handling it, yeah. So that this is one. So I hope you got the feel. So this can be used to optimize any, uh, let's say algorithms or uh, like let's say a PI controller ka. If you want PI, PID values, you know. So how will you how one can optimize? So one can use it in this fashion, yeah. So I'll uh, quickly connect into you know put push it into some another layer so that I need not delete. So I'll uh, just disable this. Yeah. So now this is done, but this is also disabled. Yeah. And then we have something like multi-run and project tips. We already anyway we have seen it. So let me just quickly show you how multi-run works. Yeah. So let's say now what I'll do is I'll uh, bring out our. Uh, Older colleague, and I'll just enable this. Yeah, and uh, let's say I want to generate some data, a lot of data for various. Uh, I want to just analyze uh, the effect, or let's say I want to generate. We want to generate a lot of uh, 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 let's say uh, this transient current uh, transients in this uh, current, yeah, transient in this uh, circuit basically uh, for various switching times of uh, voltage. So what I mean is, let's say uh, I'll just connect a switch here. So I'll uh, let's say I'll go to main or or basically okay. Let me just show you in this one quick an another way of doing it. So signal parameter I'll say initial phase I'll quickly delete and just say I hope it should just work. So I'll just say phase yeah initial. This is the phase. What is the phase degree? Or basically it will uh, uh, you know. I, I guess it it will just pick up those variable phase. So I just need to define a phase which just sweeps from let's say zero to three sixty degree, and we see various transients. And I want to store that transients. Yeah. 
let's say there may be an analysis let's say mi a what you call machine learning or artificial intelligence based or any other approach which you require to have lot of uh, data sets pertaining to uh, you know some some variable changed or sweeped yeah so for such cases we have this multi run uh, feature in ps card again you need to go to io devices and here i'll, I'll just pick up this multi run yeah so i'll just connect it here and i'll quickly okay we just want one variable to be controlled so i'll click maximum we can go till six variables i'll just select one yeah and then uh, go to and it's a real value so i'll just say real value and you just have start and end of this so i'll just say start with zero end at 360 degree yeah and maybe with step of 10 degree yeah change the thing with 10 degree and i'll go and recording data configuration i'll uh, i'll say don't record anything yeah yeah so uh, maybe in this uh, recorded video you can see it later so i'll just say okay so you see just there is one uh, one variable out and all other peripherals are out yeah and i'll just i hope it just works yeah so i'll just call this as face yeah and just for you to see how things work maybe what i'll do is since uh, it is already selected i'll just uh, disable the circuit so that we just see whether how face works yeah so i'll go to components uh, like whether it really changes thing yeah I'll connect it here, and I'll just say yes. Like show the same, use the same name of the variable, and just to see whether it really works, what I'll do is I'll again push a polymeter or plot a polymeter here. Yeah. So let's uh, quickly run and see. Okay, as you see, it just it just had uh, swept that. So yeah, the maximum. Let's say let me make it four hundred. Minimum is minus five. Run it again and show you. Yeah, I hope you can see this. So at uh, all the runs, like it, it creates thirty-seven runs and uh, it just changes, change, changes the value. Yeah. Okay. So now what we'll do is let's say we run it completely for you know five. Uh, okay. Let me just use this setting because units are also visible. So I'll just make it point five and let's say we run it with a step size of hundred microsecond and plot of also of hundred microsecond, hundred microsecond. Yeah. And I'll enable this circuit, uh, the setup. And basically, we should just have various transients, you know, uh, in the so one at a time. You will say as and when it uh, assigns one value, you will say one trans one transient observed. Yeah. And let's say in case if you want to store that run, so what I'll do is I want to save this value. So I'll just say only the plot I want to save. So I'll just say all runs you save it. Yeah. And go to project setting and just say save channel to disk. Yes. And the name let let the uh, file choose the system choose PS Cat choose yeah. So let's hope for the best and let let me just run it yeah. Uh, okay yeah I think uh, uh, in case if you want to vary directly like this you will have to change something yeah. So maybe what I'll do is I'll quickly uh, revert this to whatever it was. Perhaps this was the definition. Yeah. And let me just run it and see once. Okay, yeah. Anyway, it will work because uh, now it is back to the original source. So, I, so somehow we need to just insert this. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll uh, go and just place a circuit breaker here. Yeah. So I'll just go back, select a circuit breaker. Yeah, copy this. Pull it here, and instead of now angles, uh, uh, we will now change the time time of a uh, connection. Yeah. I hope it makes sense. So, breaker and uh, so these are its like you know configuration. I will say okay. So the variable is brk. So I'll just say brk, like breaker control. Yeah. You can address this with this variable. And we want only one operation, which is on on time. So initially it will be open. Yeah. And the time of breaker operation, let's uh, uh, use this variable. You know. So let's say let me call it as t 
close yeah i hope they should work yeah and now i'll this i'll call this as t close yeah and uh, now we'll vary uh this switching time let's say since we are running till 0.5 second let me switch it at uh uh, let's start at point two. Let let's say you start at point two. Which step of let's say uh, maybe uh, uh, two milliseconds or so two e minus three, and we want to uh, go till let's say at least half the cycle. So point two one. Yeah. So let's see. And here we. Yeah. Let me just keep it to some numbers. Yeah. And let's see if it works. Yeah. yeah now you will see yeah so i hope you can see this oops sorry yeah, it just works and it give at various time it just runs yeah so yeah some it, it just work yeah so with source actually there are various uh, different models of source wherein you can control the phase so yeah so for this situation you one should just go with this uh, circuit breaker logic yeah so what I'll do is I'll uh, again I can now fine tune this instead of two millisecond I want to run at every one second one millisecond yeah and let's see what happens. So just for quick view I'll come here hit Y and just hit run. As and when uh, you see the T close is occurring here. Yeah I hope you can see the transients you know are affected in some way. Yeah, so this is it. And in case if you come here, you will see various, you know, snaps will be generated, this out files. So these are pertaining to one value at a time. Yeah. So similarly, one can use this. So we had 11 runs. So you will see this files got generated. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's it. So this is uh, what uh, uh, this uh, session is about. And uh, one more, uh, let's say if you have very large projects, uh, one can use subsystems and you know you can uh, what you call you can compress certain part of system into a subsystem and you can make it look uh, uh, aesthetic you know and in case if you have, don't want to abstract things out you know in large system you want to keep everything in one page no uh, subsystem thing then uh, one can also just to surf thing uh, anyway one can drag drop easily but still there is a feature called bird eye view uh, i think it's here yeah yeah, so for example, you are at certain part, so you can see this window, view window. Yeah, so I can just hover it anywhere I want. So this can give you a quick overview of how the system can be. Yeah, yeah. So this may help sometime looking from out, out, outside. Yeah, though you can zoom out and see, but I think this helps sometime. Yeah, and already we have seen this layer feature. Yeah, and then later. There are another features also. For example, while doing this exercise, like building this optimization problem, we had have to have build this uh, uh, a function using blocks. But for certain certain control actions, uh, controllers design, or maybe you may have your own model. You know, if you want to do, one can also use uh, 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 its uh, interfaces with C and Fortran. You know, which somewhere will. Uh, uh, which can be you know written in this form and can be interfaced with this pscat package uh, probably we'll, we'll see this uh, sometime later in the further sessions yeah yeah so these are the things which we had seen yeah so for any query you can uh, reach out to us yeah thank you